PhD admissions are getting more and more competitive, but there are a few things that you can do to stand out. I'm going to channel my inner PhD supervisor to give you their wish list. I've got 15 years experience in academia and oh, I can, oh yeah, just use all of that experience and why aren't you in the lab? Get me more papers. All right, all right, I I'm in the right headspace. The first thing I would look for if I was a PhD supervisor are recommendations. Ah, it just takes all the process away. It makes it easy to just decide on a PhD student if they come with good recommendations from people I know, like, or trust. Now, this is one of the easiest things. I am a supervisor. I have got tons of admin paperwork, just rubbish to do for the university. My time is precious. I don't wanna spend hours going through all of these different applications and going through the intricacies of each one. If I know that you come recommended from a certain professor or a certain research group, or you've just got some lovely recommendations, that is gonna make it way easier on me to make a decision. I choose PhD students like I choose solar panel installation for my house. If a friend recommends it, that's the company or person I'm gonna go with. So make sure that your PhD application has really strong letters of recommendation, particularly from people that you have done research for. Now, if you don't have any sort of hardcore research experience, reach out to your undergraduate lab demonstrators, supervisors, um, whatever it is, just to kind of just show you've got some experience in a lab. But the more lab experience you can get in undergraduate and uh, by doing research scholarships over the summer or by sort of like volunteering in a lab, the better. So make sure you make the PhD supervisor go, okay, I trust this application and person because other people told me to. Although, I'll pretend I read your application when really I'll scan it just before you come in the room. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, my TEDx talk and more is exclusive content only available for free. So go check it out. As a PhD supervisor, I have been in academia so long that I am sometimes so far removed from the research that I actually love that having someone come along and tell me they like my research and that we're a good fit and that they're excited about doing the experiments that I propose is a great feeling. Now, as a PhD supervisor, I have been battle hardened by the university. I now find very little joy in life. I find joy drinking a lot of wine at night and moaning to my partner about the different administration tasks the university has got me doing. So if this PhD student comes up to me or prospective PhD student comes up to me and says, I love your research, we're a good match. This is what I like about your research. They've actually read a couple of my papers that uh, they kind of understand my field a little bit more than just kind of like a, a summary that they've read on my website, then I'm gonna to start to feel that same emotional bubble underneath. I may even forget for a moment that the university is is piling on more and more administration tasks to me and that I hate my job. So if you can convince a PhD supervisor that you are the person that's gonna kind of be passionate about their research, that's gonna um, be enthusiastic about going into the lab about having conversations about the thing they fell in love with, then you are gonna stand out, no doubt. So a good research match that goes into the little bit of the emotional level can have a huge physical and emotional impact on the potential PhD supervisor because they are tired. They are tired, they are playing the academic game. The at academic game has got worse and worse over the years and if you can just show them that there is a little bit of love left in science, research, or whatever their field is, then you will get a big emotional reaction, a positive one, and that's what you wanna do. So research fit and uh, research enthusiasm around their field goes a very long way. Make sure that comes through in your application. Even though research grades really have nothing to do with how you will perform in a PhD, they are easy metrics. Now, an academic, especially a PhD supervisor, 
Canada has been judged their entire career by an H index. The H index is how many papers you have produced with that many number of citations. We use it far too much for promotion. It was never meant for that, but metrics is just part of the system. If I can look at your grades and say, okay, this person is clever, they stood out against the background noise of the, uh, of the, of the cohort that came through, then that is perfect. Even though grades only show me how well you do in exams, they can at least give me an indication of your dedication to science or um, the learning process. Once you start a PhD, it is a huge learning curve because you are no longer doing grades, exam stuff, you are now doing research, which is far tougher. But if I can rely on shortcuts like grades to, to make a decision, then that is brilliant because I need to get back to that pile of rubbish administration work for the university and your grades are the perfect way of determining whether or not you are clever, even though it's just a weird way of showing me that you're really good at passing exams. Um, it doesn't matter at this stage. I'm gonna go with someone who has got good grades. Now, as an academic supervisor, I don't want to be a stereotype, but my brain is like a sieve. You tell me something, it's out the other side. In fact, little side story, I'm going to come out of character now. Um, I used to present the same research for week after week after week, and uh, sometimes my supervisor wouldn't even notice. It became like a little bit of a game in the end to see how many times I could show the same result with them considering it a new result anyway, back into character. So my brain as a PhD supervisor is like a sieve. I have so many requirements during my day, teaching, administration, I may have talked about that, PhD students, my own research, applying for grants, that what you tell me will go out my brain almost immediately. So what I recommend you do is in your application, you have a hook, something that actually helps the PhD supervisor remember you. Now, we all have something in our lives. Now, we may have a hobby that's science related. We may have an interesting story from our past that people go, oh, that's the guy or person that did this. Now, whatever it is, try to find something that you can put in your PhD application, even if it's in the about me, you know, you can just put in a couple of sentences about a hobby, a thing, something sciencey related, try to keep it as closely aligned to um, the PhD application as possible. But Having that just means I can immediately put you in a box and I go, ah, that's that application. And boom, it's easy to recall when I've got all this other stuff going on in my mind. So as a PhD supervisor, I do need a little bit of a hook to remember your application amongst all of them that I've got or that I will see throughout the year. Now, here's the thing is I don't want you to be too distracted during your PhD. I don't want you to not be in the lab. What if your hobby takes you away for large amounts of time away from the lab. Maybe on the weekend, it's a little bit too involved for my liking. So be very careful about what sort of uh, hobbies you include in your personal statement description. Look, the realities of academia is that I need PhD students and postdocs to do research under my name so that my career gets better. I can't have people with a work-life balance. I don't have a work-life balance as a PhD supervisor. So I don't expect you to have one during your PhD. Now that's some research supervisors, not all of them, but don't make it seem like you're gonna be away on these fancy camps or spending too much time on your hobby. You know, I want you to have a little bit of a fun, but not too much, thank you. As a PhD supervisor, I want you to have some research experience. Now, I'm not expecting you to have loads because, you know, you're coming into my group. Welcome. But I do expect you to know your way around typical OH and S stuff. I expect you to have done some undergraduate labs or some other type of research experience that, that shows me that you know a little bit of what you're getting yourself into, even if it's a little bit of a sanitized version of a PhD. It doesn't matter. Research experience 
experience goes a long way. So I want to know that you're safe doing uh, you know, your lab work, if you're in a lab, that you're a bit of a self-starter, that you can kind of handle the ups and downs of research just a little bit. Just give me a hint that you're able to do these things. I can't be dealing with loads of hassles during the day. I've got my own stuff going on. So if I can trust you that you're gonna come into my research lab and not be a massive pain in the ass for the first couple of months, perfect. So a little bit of research experience just shows me that you're capable of being self-starter, you're capable of coming up with novel research, or you at least know the process, or you're at least familiar with some sort of it. That takes the burden off me, which means that you can get to making my career better even quicker. Thank you very much. Research experience, make sure you include it because it's going to show me that you're going to be a great addition to my lab, and I'm going to have to put in the smallest amount of effort to get you you going on your own research project. I'm pretty busy, so any excuse that I've got to dismiss an application, I will use immediately. So just make sure that your research experience and your, your research application doesn't include any obvious mistakes. Make sure how you have someone sort of read over it. Look for spelling mistakes, look for grammatical errors, look for any sort of like typos that are distracting. All of that is just so easy for me to go, well, this person clearly didn't try and get rid of it. So if you've got a PhD application, make sure that it looks serious. Make sure that it's uh, not full of obvious uh, sort of scientific or research mistakes. That's the first thing, because I don't want my precious re research topic being misconstrued or misrepresented in an application. But secondly, I just what, don't want to sort of like spend time trying to understand what uh, the misspelling of a word means. So get someone to go through it, get it proofread, get it looked over, make it look friendly, maybe just bump out the, uh, the line height a little bit, just to make it not look like a massive wall of text. And it's a day in a life as a researcher, I spend my life looking at walls of text, whether or not they're thesis, whether or not they're grant applications, whether or not they're anything else, just make it easy to read and I will thank you for it. <sighs> thank you. So there we have it. I channeled my inner PhD supervisor, which is kind of like a culmination of my 15 years of dealing with multiple researchers and supervisors and academics across a range of institutions. Let me know what you would add to that list for a great PhD admissions application in the comments. Um, and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD PhD survival guide, which is coming out very, very soon, um, as well as my insider forum. All right, then I shall see you in the next video.